In today's video, we'll be taking a look back at the popular noggin show, Ubi, looking at the show's history and where are the puppets today. Before we start this video, I would like to give a big shout out to Mr. Ben G for suggesting the topic of today's video. I appreciate it, Ben. Great choice. Also, be sure to comment below your favorite childhood show. And feel free to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on other awesome puppet content just like this. Ubi is an American children's television show. It was produced by Little Airplane Productions for the Noggin Channel. The show was a collaboration between Nickelodeon and the Sesame Street Workshop. The show is about Ubi, a curious and creative hand puppet. The show takes place in a neighborhood where bear hand puppets talk and act like people. In the show, Ubi lives with his grandpa, Grandpa, and his overdramatic little sister, Uma. Ubi is also best friends with another hand named Keiko. Together, Ubi and his family have funny, simple adventures that celebrate and teach kids the awkward steps of growing up. All of the characters talk in simple sentences and refer to themselves in the third person. Kind of like this. Neighborhood finished. Zoo. Oh, show Uma, show Uma. <laughs> According to the show's creator, Josh Selig, he said that he got the idea for the show by watching Puppeteers audition for Sesame Street. Uh, a writer there for about five years at Sesame Street and then after that, I started making films there, and then I became a producer for Sesame Street International program called Ubi. When they auditioned, they used only their hands and a pair of plastic eyes, which inspired Selig to create a show about super simple hand puppets. Josh turned to Martin P. Robinson and Tim Legasse to help him develop the idea. Both Tim and Martin built both the eyes, props, and costumes for all the Ubi characters. In 1999, Nickelodeon started seeking pitches for shows to put on its then upcoming cable network, Noggin. Selig pitched Ubi under the working title Peepo to Noggin. For Ubi, Selig put together a cast made up entirely of Muppet alumni, starting with Tim Legasse. Legasse played the main character of Ubi. Tim is an American director, puppeteer, and puppet designer, known for his long resume of puppet projects and work, but a lot of you might better know Tim for voicing and puppeteering the main character, Crash, on the popular 2012 Disney XD show, Crash and Bernstein. Stephanie DeBruzzo voiced and puppeteered Uma and Inca. Stephanie has also lended her voice and puppeteering skills on various kid shows and projects, like Sesame Street, Air in the Big Blue Hat, Puzzle Place, Sheep in the Big City, and The Book of Pooh. Noel McNeil is also a famous and well-known puppeteer. McNeil voiced and puppeteered Keiko and various other characters on Ubi. A lot of you may be more familiar with Noel as the ever so popular voice and puppeteer of Bear from Bear in the Big Blue House. If you would like to know more about the history of Bear in the Big Blue House, please feel free to click the video above. Tyler Bunch is also a very popular puppeteer, director, and actor. On Ubi, Tyler puppeteered and voiced Grandpa. Just like a lot of the other puppeteers, you may be more familiar with Tyler's work as the voice and puppeteer of Trilo on Bear in the Big Blue House and for his work on Sesame Street. Ubi was filmed at Kaufman Astoria Studios in New York. The male puppeteers of the show were asked to shave their arms regularly if they played younger characters. Selig said in a 2004 interview that Legas had to shave often so that Ubi wouldn't look like a hairy kid. Tyler Bunch was told not to shave. Bunch's natural arm hair gave Grandpa the appearance of an elderly, hairy grandfather. In the U.S., Ubi was mainly shown on the Noggin Channel from 2000 to 2002. Ubi had 52 long-form episodes and at least 48 shorts were aired over three seasons. The show won multiple Parents' Choice Awards, and the show was later picked up for two more seasons, which finished airing in 2005. Ubi was also available on the Noggin mobile app from May 2015 until March 2020. In January of 2021, Ubi was added to the Paramount Plus streaming catalog. According to Ubi Wiki, Noggin hosted a few live events that featured Ubi. The first was the Ubi Educational Tour, which was open from June 2001 to 2002. It was part of the North American Trade Show Tour in St. Paul, Minnesota. At the tour was a replica of Ubi's house, complete with a sunflower display and a mailbox. Visitors could take a photo with the display and get info about Noggin, which was still a new channel at the time. In November 2001, Noggin featured the Ubi Shorts as part of a film festival called Kid First. In June 2002, the restaurant chain Jillian's held a weekly event called Noggin Play Days. Visitors could watch a live feed of Noggin with themed activities. The Ubi shorts were featured as part of the live screenings, and a few of the activities were centered around the show. From April 2004 to July 2006, Noggin held a monthly event called Club Noggin at malls across America. 
The club featured different characters each month, and attendees could watch the characters and make crafts based on them. Ubi was the featured character a few separate times, starting in September 2004. In November 2007, the Nick Hotel in Orlando, Florida started a promotion called Noggin Month. One of the events was Ubi Arts and Crafts, based on the Ubi episode, Make Art. Visitors can make Ubi themed crafts and take home a pair of official Ubi eyes. Now, usually this is the part of the video where I would answer the question about where are these puppet characters today? And for this particular show, that's a pretty simple question to answer. A good part of these puppets' heads and mouths were the actual hands of those famous puppeteers on the show. As far as the whereabouts of Ubi and his friend's eyes, which is really creepy to say, after searching Google, I actually never found the official eyes from the Ubi show. The closest thing I could find was a website called Lista, which, according to them on their site, had claimed that held an auction a little while ago about a supposedly auctioned off pair of blue eyes from the official Ubi show. I honestly don't know how reliable this site is, but I'm hoping that was true. But I didn't stop there. I decided to keep searching, and I came across a question on the Muppet Central Forum website. User The Creature Work had asked on February 27, 2007, that he was looking for Ubi eyes for a workshop that he was running, and he was wanting to know did anyone know where he could get them. A user named Buck Beaver had responded to him and said that they're called peepers. Little known fact. They were invented by puppeteer Hobby Ford. There's a chance that Puppet for Goodness Sake, which I checked, didn't have anything. Buck Beaver continues and says otherwise, check out peeperspuppets.com. They actually are still around and they have a bunch of different designs, colors, what have you, of these peeper eyes available. They're only $3.27. And if you decide to Google search peeper puppet eyes, there are a ton of websites across the board that also feature the same type of eyes. And on UbiWiki, they talk about the official eyes. According to them, the official replicas were only given out at Club Noggin and the Nick Hotel. In 2006, an unofficial website called UbiEyes.com started selling its own replicas of Ubi Eyes. It was completely operated by fans with no connection to Noggin. It mainly sold premium eyes that were exact likenesses of Ubi, Uma, and Keiko. It also sold costumes, wigs, and off-brand googly eyes. In 2008, it launched an advertising campaign with YouTube that inspired a lot of fan-made videos with Ubi Eyes. Unfortunately, after that, supplies ran out and the website closed in 2013. Although it was unofficial, the site was recognized by Nick Jr. on its Facebook page and Nickelodeon Pakistan featured a photo from UbiEyes.com on its website. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not check out the next video on the screen right here. I think you'll enjoy it and I'll see you over there.